All right, cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second or third. Uh, I'm not going to keep count, but welcome to another uh, public webinar. As you guys know, what we like to do is I will go over X amount of trades I've done for the week. And then after that, I kind of just leave it off for you guys to either show me wins, losses, anything in between. And we kind of just want to uh, review those trades and, and see what could have gone right, what could have gone or what you could have done better, etc. And the reason why I like to do that is solely because I think trading has always been such a personal thing. I think everyone, for example, we're both looking at this Euro USD chart here at a M3 time frame, and every single one of us is going to see completely different things off of the bat, right? Like for me, I could say the first thing that stands out, right, was just to annotate is that we did not reach a previous sell to buy here, right? Whereas somebody else could just see, oh, okay, we're in an uptrend, right? Or somebody, oh, okay, we're about to break this, so we could be in a downtrend, right? So everyone sees completely different things when they first open a chart. So I think the best method of quote unquote teaching is to try to help the the trader individually at the best of my ability that's why i do uh, journal reviews that's why i do case studies here on this on these webinars i just think that's the best route right to help someone because everyone has different problems everyone not not, not just that but everybody thinks differently everybody approaches the market differently etc 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 so i do believe everything is relatively personalized so i try to do my best to cater to that so how's everybody doing good to see a couple of people on here almost at 30 very nice how's everybody doing <coughs> excuse me blessed man i agree i agree blessed again i agree i 100 percent agree New day, new opportunity. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I don't want to take up too much of you guys' time. I do want to give you guys as much time as possible for the case studies. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So there's two things. Uh, one, I know in the last webinar we discussed the uh, the ebook that I made. I, I've been getting really good feedback on that, but I will be reaching out to anybody who did purchase the book. And solely to to get some feedback, make sure I didn't have any typos, make sure I didn't have any um, anything go wrong with that. And if you guys don't know what I am talking about, right? I have the preview in the free Discord under the section uh, hashtag ebook. All right, and I have like a promo, and you guys can see. Uh, just exactly how the book is structured, the the tone of the book, types of chart work, and everything. Every every uh, chart, I'm sorry, has its own Safari link, so you can, in case anything is blurry, you could just open it up, and these images automatically cater to uh, your system settings. So, uh, in any information with that, just go ahead and go into the public Discord. All right, and for those that have purchased it, thank you so much for supporting the brand, and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. But let's go ahead and get back to this. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Can you guys see my screen? Can everybody see my screen? Cool. Awesome. Right, so this week I only have two trades to go through. I was actually, I've actually been sick for the past about two weeks now, uh, and all of last week I just could not get out of bed, man. I, I, it was to the point where I just literally did not even want to get out of bed. Uh, That's just how bad I was feeling. So I didn't have any, I didn't have any chance to look at the chart for all of last week, and this week was a bit of a sloppy week. There wasn't that many scenarios that I was able to catch. Uh, but there are two scenarios. One actually missed my entry and the second one actually hit TP. So here's scenario number one, AUD USD, right? The DLE approach, as you guys know, is the approach that I try to take with every, every type of scenario where we have the direction, we have some type of liquidity being taken, and then we have uh, an execution model, right? In order to follow that original directional bias. 
right? And because I am a scalper, I'm only looking for uh, immediate transitions from bearish to bullish and bullish to bearish into the immediate quote unquote high or low, depending on if it's a buy or sell. So when I'm looking at, right, at this scenario at this current time, as you guys know, I like to take my befores and afters. Um, we are technically bullish, right? We are technically bullish, at least from an internal trend, because we have taken out a previous high, right? But because we have unsubstantially taken out a new high, right? Usually we see a, a deeper retracement only because we didn't substantially break the high by substantially break the high. And I kind of mean reaching for or completely breaking through the previous high. But because that did not occur, right? We have a potential of the immediate continuation usually failing, right? Because obviously if we're going from an internal continuation trend, we should see a low create a high into a retracement and a continuation higher. So what I have to do in this type of scenario is if we have a continuation break of structure, I know that the internal has to be bearish in order to cause this continuation break of structure. So because that is the case, I need to essentially wait for a transition of bullish to bearish. I mean, bearish to bullish, sorry. And how I interpreted that transition came via order flow disruption. So it's a very clear internal. Let me actually use a different color for that. There is an internal buy to sell move, right? Very clear there. Buy to sell move that takes up previous wicks, which means there is some type of liquidity within those wicks that is being swept. And then we have an engulfing, pretty much taking that entire zone out. So that zone becomes an immediate, right? POI to continue lower, right? Whether that could be to a previous turbulence point or whether that could be to interpret this as a sweep and then this kind of just continues lower doesn't really matter all i really care to note is that we have a point of interest right because it has followed the rules of creating a sell or maybe a buy to sell scenario right we come into and mitigate that and we take out a previous low right or the the, the engulfing low right there because that has been taken Right, that confirms me at, or that confirms the POI as a valid POI and a valid reaction. So you guys know with the OFD model, right, if we have a reaction from a POI and then the POI is to fully break through, that shows a type of exhaustion, and that's why we're looking to uh, essentially get into a trade based on that type of sequence. So as you can see, that sequence is present here where we have a POI present a CBOS after the POI, meaning that the reaction is valid, and then that breaks through. So I am then looking to take my position based on the final sell to buy move there, right? Really, I could also wait for here, right? But because this is a structural point from, a, let's say, an M3, M5 basis, this could be an external POI. So my goal is to just get into the trade and not necessarily be perfect about the risk to reward, right? Because there are plenty of scenarios, as you guys, I'm sure all of you know, that sometimes we just don't reach the entire POI. Sometimes we don't even reach the POI at all. So my goal is not to get the perfect entry, it's just to get in entry, right? And unfortunately, for this scenario, right, based on the order flow disruption, it just did not uh, come back into right my point of interest, right? This just kind of blew through TP. Right, so what are the good takeaways? I was directionally correct, right? I analyzed my model correctly in terms of the DLE approach, right? And there was a valid execution model, right? Because um, there are refinements that I can make. One second. Sorry, let me just admit some people in. There are some, some refinements I could make here based on this singular scenario, whereas I could say, hey, because we have an engulfing, then I can assume that we are going to be bullish, but if I'm to buy after the engulfing, that kind of kills the risk to reward completely. This would be less than a one to two. So I'd rather just stick to what I'm already doing. And maybe this is just one of those scenarios where the entry just didn't suffice or, or it, it, it just did not hit. Um, and that's okay. Bottom line, that's okay. I can lose a trade. I can miss a trade. I could win a trade. It's all the same. It's all a result. So we're just here to continuously improve and keep putting in reps. So this AU scenario, unfortunately, did not hit. Uh, but my second scenario did fortunately hit, right, where 
I have a very similar scenario with, uh, with your USD, right? Where I'm looking to right, have my DLE approach, right? I know that my direction is internally bullish, right? But I know that we have a continuation break of structure and why am I referencing this low? Because this is the final low that took any type of wicks that created that final high, which is up until here. All right, so this is my internal structural range of the external bullish move. All right, so because that is the case, once this point breaks, then I have a continuation break of structure. Continuation break of structure symbolizes to me that we are internally bearish, right? So if I'm looking for a conversion, then I must, right, have a conversion of a bearish to bullish in order to target a previous high. I usually always target the, the immediate previous high if, if any of you are wondering, um, previous high or previous low, but based on this, it's relatively the same scenario as the AUD USD trade where we see a POI react and then completely fail, right? There are no examples of that coming into the POI. That's why this is a very specific model, right? Where we have mitigations, mitigation, no mitigation there, mitigation, mitigation, right? And we don't see any type of scenario really break through up until this region here, right? This region here, not for one, we have a sell to buy area, meaning we have a point of interest because we have a point of interest. Cool. Then we can potentially use this as an area to potentially look for a transition. I'm not just looking to buy here, right? It's not necessarily a bad thing to just buy from the POI. But I have to understand that if I play based on reactions and not just off of guessing POIs, then I know, right, that subjectively my win rate will increase, right? Solely because I'm waiting for price to show me something and I'm not just trying to guess and hope per se. Um, so just going based off of that alone. Cool. We have quite a bit of people hopping on. Happy to see that. Uh, but just going off of the point of interest. Right. Once again, I'm looking at points of interest to then continue the internal bearish trend. And I'm looking for one of them to essentially fail. As soon as one of them fails, then I can uh, potentially anticipate a, uh, a new found entry. Right. So based on this, right, based on what I've said before, externally, we are bullish. So I know my direction. Right. I know that there is a CBOS present, meaning some type of liquidity has been swept. Right. And now I need a justification right, to execute a model. And the justification, right, comes from a potential failed POI. And it's either, my entries are usually a liquidity grab continuation, a order flow disruption, or a structural disruption, which is some, which is what you guys should know if you guys have been paying attention with the content. If not, it's directly in the book. Um, but similar to the AU trade, we do have, right, a point of interest, right, that then creates an engulfing to the downside. Right from here, we see a CBOS present after, right? The POI has been met, right? So because we have the CBOS present similar to the AU and then we break through the POI, right? That means that this POI was not only valid, but it's now been disrupted. So because it's now been disrupted, I can now, uh, one second. Sorry about that. So because we now have order flow disruption, then I can justify entering the scenario. But this is one of those like refinements that I'm still working on that I don't know which one is 100% the better quote unquote type of point of interest to take. Because from a sell to buy theory, right, this is the final sell to buy move, right? Meaning I can realistically take my execution based on this high here. But if we're focusing on the internal move, then there is an internal sell to buy, but that failed to break a previous low, but it did take out an internal low, right? So if we're looking to be 100% conservative or as conservative as possible, then I can justify, right, using the entire POI. Why? Because my invalidation will be my SL no matter what, or at least some type of invalidation will be my SL. And, or... I can be a bit more aggressive, which is what I had done here, just because this is usually what I go for. I usually go for the final move that gave me a, 
a sell to buy. I don't go based on the overall, but it's a refinement that I've kind of been looking into and I don't know right now if it is the, the better way to go about it. But in this case, we use the final sell to buy move, right? That took out previous structure here. So use that as an entire POI. One second. And that was my execution. I will say it was a, a tad bit late, right? I did a screenshot this like two minutes late, but I mean, you guys have to understand when I'm scalping, the only downside when I'm scalping is that the barrier of entry into these trades are, are very, very minimal. Right. The only way I could get into this trade is I would have needed to be within this POI in this time window, which is about a minute, 30 seconds. Uh, hello, do you post the recording calls in the Discord? I post the public ones on YouTube. Post the public ones on YouTube. Uh, but other than that, here's the result of the scenario. Internal order flow disruption came out to be a success. Right. But this is just one of those textbook model or textbook plays that that happens, you know, I would say a couple times a month. Uh, but the the tricky part isn't analyzing these types of scenarios. It's more so being at the charts at the time that this has been um, that this has been active. Right. Because, like I said, you have a one two minute time window in order to get into these scenarios. So you have to be very, very quick and you have to be very, very focused. So a lot of people that can't do that. Hold on, guys. Okay, sorry, I, I was I heard some weird noise. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, this is my two scenarios for the day. Coming back into what I was mentioning with the downside of scalping is that, like I said, the barrier of entry to get into these trades is very, very small. So you have to be very quick and you have to be very focused. Right, which is why I'm also looking to test out swing uh, positions over the next, um, let's say, two to three weeks. Uh, just to see, because obviously if I'm swinging rather than scalping, then I know that my entry is going to be at, um, at the desired POI after a desired model for a much longer period of time. So there's a lot more, or there's a different expectation, right? All right. For these scalps, I'm usually leaning towards trying to be in and out as fast as possible because this is like a one to five, you know, this is... Let me actually pull it up. This is right about a one to five, you know, so it's a very good scenario for a span of 50 minutes, you know, and if we're talking efficiency, then that's as efficient as it gets. <coughs> Excuse me, but that does not discredit swinging whatsoever, right? Why? Because from a swing POI or let's say even from a minor intraday POI, like this is more so a minor intraday POI here, the barrier of entry to get in there right, is about 15 minutes rather than a minute and a half, you know. So there's 100% no ideal way to go about your trading in terms of should you scalp intraday swing, right. It's more so just figuring out what works for you. Scalps following a intraday swing continuation is easy TP moves. Sure. Sure. But that's if you're able to correlate scalp intraday and swing. Not many people can do that, right. Like obviously from a for most of my scalps, I'm only looking at the minor intraday and the scalp. Like there's no real need for me to look at other stuff because I'm just looking for what I already look for. Um, and I don't necessarily need external biases, right? I just need to know that we are internally bullish, right? I'm looking for a conversion that's coming from a pullback, right? And if that conversion occurs, then I can justify coming back into a previous high. That's the, that's kind of the gist of, of my trading these days. And I kind of want to do that similarly, but just on a higher time frame, right? We don't, for example, here, let's say we have a bullish impulse and we have a, a swing POI, which is probably a daily POI. Then the barrier of entry is about three days, you know? So that's much better for somebody who maybe doesn't have the patience to, or the focus even, because obviously we know attention spans are horrible these days, right? To be at the chart, glued to the charts for let's say two to three hours a day you know not many people have that opportunity so maybe i can start swinging with a variety of different bears and maybe see some success there and i could show you guys pretty much different approaches to the same model if that makes sense but that concludes my small rant for today 
other than that, yeah, I just wanted to cover the book, wanted to cover the executions. And now I do want to leave for you guys a lot of time for you guys to show me case studies. What do you guys want to go through? I know there's a lot of people in here that want to go through case studies. I will go uh, in order of first come, first serve. So any questions, concerns, go through that first, and then we can get into the case studies. Cool, 38 people on. Very, very nice. Good to see you guys on here. Who's first? <laughs> Who's first? Great question. No, man, just post them. Just post them. I will keep up with the chat. No worries. Maybe Tomas has some, uh, has some stuff he wants to show as well. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to open Google Drive links. You have to send me TradingView links or a, maybe a PDF. Because, I mean, how are these structured? No worries, John. Yeah, is, uh, is it cool if you send TradingView links or... Or you could even post them in the in the free Discord and we can go through them there. But yeah, we can start with Rays. Let's see. Cool scenario one. Great. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you can send them on Discord, and we can open up on Discord. No worries. Uh, let's see. Fell better. Good quote. DLE. Cool. I understand that we are bullish. I understand that we have a CBOS here, and I see we have a full BOS here. Cool. I, I understand the, the bias. I just will say that the invalidation to the bias is here. Why? Because we have a full BOS, which is in alignment with the external. Because that's in alignment with the external. That means that if this line is to break, then we have structural disruption, right? And a less likely uh, or a much less likely scenario of this continuing than bullish. So let's see. I like that. Unwillingness. LG. Let's look at the entry. But you got the direction and you got the liquidity part correct. Okay, nice. I see. I see why you justified this. So for the people who aren't understanding, internally, we have to be bearish in order to reach, right, the discounted levels of the original, right, uh, POI that he showed. Let me see. Right, internally has to be bearish. This is a CBOS based on the internal trend. Right, meaning that you are still technically bearish here. You're still technically bearish, right? So you can't justify buying here. You can, but the only thing that that or the only issue here is that if you're buying here, you have to take profit here, right? Because the internal may be bullish, but we have to interpret this as a CBOS, right? This as a CBOS. So once we have this occur, then this is an internal structural disruption because the internal here is bearish, right? Because we, one, we solidify the high here by taking out a low. So this is now the pullback high of high, low retracement. But once this occurs, right, this then gets confirmed after this break and then fully confirmed after this one. So this, because this did not take out a previous low, that is considered unwillingness which is noted there, but that is not occurring until here after this fully breaks. 
which justifies this solidified point as a stop loss. So now it's really just a matter of getting your entries. So overall, very good trade. So from a POV, let me let people in. So from a POV of the internal here that you're looking at, what I'm looking at here right now, this is a structural disruption because you have the high, low uh, retracement and this becomes solidified once a low breaks because as you can see, no low has been broken. So once this low breaks, this high is then solidified because it's the external high and that is the pullback high. So once this low fails to break a previous low and then breaks, right, the solidified point, then we have unwillingness present and a structural disruption model in play. But because this is an LG, and if we're focusing on the external picture, which is bullish, then based on the external bullish uh, or the external bias, sorry, this is now an LGC because it's an LG that's in continuation with the previous model. Does that make sense? Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, let's, okay, let's, uh, let's clear that up then. So because so let's, let's base that on this time frame alone. Because like something that I'm, uh, I'm trying to transition to is just focus on very just one specific time frame and look for scenarios based on that time frame, Because here you're trying to correlate a major intraday bias with a ma minor intraday transition and a scalp entry, right? Which is complex, right? It's very complex, but for the beginner trader, I can just note this as a bullish trend. This here is an LGC because it's a liquidity grab in continuation or based on the external high here, I mean the external bias here. So all I have to do is note, right, the final sell to buy move that caused the LGC to occur. So we have direction, liquidity, and then we have a reason to execute, which would be the model. So what is the last sell to buy that we see here? That's there because you can see that this high took out this wick low and then caused the LGC. So this entire general area can be a point of interest and you're obviously targeting the previous high. So that gives you what a one to three, one to two, maybe because uh, whenever I've been, I've been testing this approach, the, the single time frame approach, everything has been very, very, um, fixed for the most part. I don't get, it's really hard to get above a one to three, one to four, but it's very consistent one to twos. And because they're continuations, they're high probability setups. Is there a better day out of the week? This move typically occurs. That's no, that is too, that's too easy of a question, man. The charts are not meant to be that simple in my opinion, right? You can take executions in a simple way, but I just go based on what's given to me on my desired days. Like I usually only trade like Tuesday to Thursday, but that doesn't mean that I miss out. On, well, I do miss out on moves Mondays and Fridays a lot. Like there was really good moves yesterday. Uh, I believe on AUD USD, there was a really good move yesterday. Right, but I missed it because I don't look at the charts on Friday. So it's really just a personal preference. Let's see, so can we review point of validation here? So the invalidation point would be here. Here is your invalidation. Because this low generated, right, the, or this low was solidified, which is now considered the pullback low of the external trend, and it justifies the LGC move. Right, so this would be your invalidation. All right, does this uh, does this one time frame approach make sense? <laughs> yep. Yep. But yeah, the thing is though is, 
like what is the cost of that right like maybe i'm getting a higher probability scenario but i'm sacrificing my risk to reward right because you're essentially going from let's say i won the six won a seven maybe to a one the two one the three but there is a lot more peace of mind here like for example i know that i'm getting into the trade right? i know my stop loss is adding the invalidation so that way right if my invalidation hits then more than likely the entire scenario is just going to go bad right because what you're doing is you're adding complexity because you're wanting to incorporate right the internal stuff which is not a bad thing i'm just i'm just trying to make you aware of what you're doing where you can over overall you can simplify it at the cost of you know a smaller risk to reward but the advantage is you know, I would say a lot more peace of mind and a lot less uh, screen time with this. But either way, I, I have no complaints. If you're able to do this stuff where you're adding complexity in terms of having a external bias, right? Internal entry, that's perfect. That's that's like how the, the RCV like style was built. Um, but over time for me, I just think now I, I just want to make sure that I'm conservative. I want to make sure that my risk management is very good. And I want to make sure that I'm only taking high probability scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Cuz like so coming into this uh the last thing here it's if we're going based on this model right the tp is here based on this model but the reason why it gave you a bigger which is here in and of itself a one to two one to three right but because you're adding complexity with the external bias and the external target then that's how you increase risk to reward like that's all it is that's that's the that's the quote unquote secret to high risk reward. It's just you're adding complexity to your trading by incorporating different levels of structure, right? So you're using a major intraday bias, minor intraday transition, and a lower time frame execution, uh, just so that you can achieve that major intraday target. So that complexity is what creates high risk to reward, right? But there are costs. All right, so we can move on to the next. Let's see, what is the next one? Oh, the last link for TP. Yep, this was the full TP. Yep, so like I said, internal entry, external bias, that complexity is what gives you a higher risk to reward. Let's see. Cool, let's see what Tomas is showing. See, so like this is a, an example of that complexity taken, let's just say, taking that complexity on crack, if I'm being honest. Like once you're messing with the micros and you're trying to incorporate the micros into the swing such major intraday biases, that is where you achieve those 1 to 30s, 1 to 40s, 1 to 50s, right? But the probability of you getting that full 1 to 50 is very, very slim. And not to mention the barrier of entry for these trades, like it is very small, you know? So... Coming into this, right? Like we said before, direction, right? Liquidity has been swept internally. And I'm looking for <coughs> an execution based on the internal. So liquidity is taken there as well, right? So now it's just a reason to look for an entry, right? And let's see how aggressive this was. Okay. So. I understand that we are internally bearish, right? High, low, high, low, right? But we do have a sweep here. Cool. I see. So the reason for entry, right? You know, uh, it is a, this is a solidified high. I say that because this is a solidified high internally, let's say from a micro sense, 
because this high led into the break of this low. So this is a solidified high. Um, and obviously there is a low and then there's a high. There's a low. This CBOS, that's correct. Right? Except I don't know. Actually, okay. I, I was considering it maybe there's a wick here. But no, it's just the box. Um, but once this final high that led into the liquidity sweep is taken, right? Because it's just a CBOS. Um, once that is taken, then I can justify a sweep. All right. Because we have an unsubstantial new low and we have a transition right after the sweep is done. That's a sweep model, um, which is the, the newest model. I just haven't fully, fully mastered it yet. That's why I don't fully share it, but that is a sweep there. Um, and really you can justify this as a buy area, but because you have the minor internal range, I would say I would enter either here and then just have my SL here just to make sure I'm in the trade. Um, but I do see the refinement here. So in summary, right, once this high breaks, that is the, the reasoning for justifying a bullish move, right? So once we have the internal bullish structural range, I would have only made, I would have made sure that I would have entered based on here. Uh, can you explain that? The last thing? Yeah, sure. Go for it. Go for it. CBOS, that's YouTube video stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Perfect. No, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Cool. What do you guys think? Caught the same move. Perfect. Mm hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, when, when have I mentioned that? Um, I wouldn't say that's a model. I would say that's a, that's the standard model for like smart money concepts where people essentially see a trend, Let's see, see a trend, right? You see the initial mitigation and then they want to take the second mitigation to then lower, right? That's what that means. But I, that isn't a model I use. I think it's, I think it's a bit too easy. I think it's, I wouldn't say outdated. I just don't think it's specific enough for me in terms of uh, having a decent win rate. Cool. Let's see. Did I miss any charts? Yeah, you use that. Yeah, for sure. If it works for you, man, use it. Uh, I, by no means am I trying to discredit it. Okay, let's see. 
Next set of charts. Cool. Okay, so for one, I would like to uh, clean up the chart a bit. Uh, for example, if we're so zoomed out to where we can't see the candles, just go to M15, go to M30, right? Okay, give yourself some space, but based on what I'm seeing here, this is a higher low, so I'm technically bullish, at least aiming for here. Let's see. Cool. I will say a, a, a bit aggressive. I would I would say it's a bit aggressive only because you're not you're not trading based on a transition. You're just trading based on a POI. Uh, but I will say in terms of where the sell to buy move happened, that is here. So I do see the justification for the trade, right? But I would use right a previous solidified point as a um as a stop loss right mainly because you just want to make sure that you don't get wicked out without invalidating your trade that's the point of the invalidation point is just like you don't want to take a trade um and then it sweeps your sl before it hits the invalidation and then it flies you know so just cover yourself like it's only a couple more pips like at the end of the day the risk to reward to me it does matter but you want to make sure that you win a trade, right? The only commonality that every single profitable trader has, the single commonality that every single trader that is profitable has is that they know how to win a trade. So just learn how to win a trade. That's like the, the main like gist in my opinion. Um, so how can I do that? Well, let's be conservative with entries. Let's be conservative with, with stop losses. And let's also be conservative with TPs. Right, so that's what I think for that. Let's see. Yeah, or it doesn't matter if your trade comes to a loss. That's 100% true. Uh, I don't know if you went over it. No, I only went over the trades that I, um, the trade for this week, which is a EU buy. But you can go ahead and show it. You can go ahead and show it if you want see but yeah i just will say with this one a bit too aggressive but you're on the right track because you got the direction right and that's like the hardest part with winning a trade because if if you can set a proper sl and you can be directionally right then you just have to justify an entry and more than likely you're going to win the trade so let's see what's next Okay, Tam, so we do have a couple of charts from the Discord. Let's go with Danny's first. Delete this. Excuse me. Let's see, so what am I looking at here? Not too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see. So based on this picture alone, I understand that we are technically bearish here. This is an external CBOS, meaning the pullback has just started externally. So maybe from like H1, H2. Um, I will say that your POI here, I disagree. I don't think your, your POI there is... I think you're kind of fitting that POI to fit this trade. I would say the reason why price reacted from there, let me undo, is because this is where the final sell 
to buy movies. This is where the final sell to buy move is. And this is just mitigating that. So that creates an internal structural range. And then this is where you could find somewhere to play off of where if you trade literally anywhere from here, if you put your SL in validation here, then you should be targeting up here. But I do see that you waited for the reaction. So I'm pretty sure I think we can go to the next photo for that. No, okay, guess not. Okay, no worries. Um, so internally, you have to be bearish in order to reach these discounted price levels. So we now have an LGC here, right? So once we have the LGC, I would justify this entire area here as a uh, entry to then aim for a previous high. That is what I would have done there. I wouldn't have waited for the internal move from there because I think this is just enough justification, right? You have a LGC after a bullish CBOS. So I can justify aiming for here. Go on to the next. Um, So this is a CBOS, All right? From here, you can still justify this as a continuation POI to get higher, right? So there's no model in play yet. So you took your you took your position just off this. <coughs> okay, and what was the result? Is this one okay? You did show me this one. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. The the POI. So the reason why I point out this one or this inefficiency here is because this is a sell to buy area. So I understand that this is irrelevant to me. The POI is irrelevant to me. I, if I'm wanting to sell, I need a justification. So at this point, I would need maybe this to react, then break through, and then I could justify a sell down here. Right. But I think this is way too soon. Right, because if we're going from a structural POV, this is a low high retracement and right, obviously still aiming for here. So this would have been a POI buy in order to aim for previous uh the previous high here. So that would have been like a one to one almost, one to two. So maybe not tradable, but the direction has to be correct. Right. And the reason why you need these transitions is because you've already had right this attempt to react. This is bearish, correct? High, low. Right, and we always have CBOS. So we have a low internally. I don't know why it's doing that. I hope you guys can't hear that. But um, if we have a low, a low, and then we have a low being broken here, then that solidifies the high. So we have a high, low retracement. Once that breaks, that's structural disruption, meaning this is now internally bullish. So I need a bearish transition to justify a sell, not a POI, right? So based on that low, into high CBOS, low into high CBOS, low into high CBOS, low into high. See what I mean? Cool. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Let me close these tabs one sec. Hey, uh, if you have training view links, send them in the chat. Don't send them on Discord. I'm just, I'm only going to go through what's on Discord. Everything else, just forward it here, please. Because uh, for some reason, my Discord is causing a, a weird noise with my recording software. Okay, I see training view links. Tam, please send those training view links in the chat. I'm, I'm done looking at... Discord. Cool. Uh, but before we go through these, let me zoom out.
but let's see any questions cool thank you where should i send the chart uh send the training view link please you guys have to go thank you for coming tomas uh, excuse me for introducing trading may you suggest time frames to find good direction um i'm not gonna answer that question so much clearer after explaining I think you, if you're asking me what is a good time frame for to find a good direction, that is, uh, you have a long way to go. Keep studying. Please keep studying. All right, we can go through these. Okay. <laughs> Internally bullish, I see. Structural disruption transition. Yep, perfect. Uh, so this is a structural disruption because we have a high into a low. All right, we technically have it here as well. All right, where we have a pullback high, give a reaction and then break through. So that technically justifies a SD as well. Uh, but then here we also see a reaction, right? Give unwillingness and then break through. So that's a that's a SD transition as well. But the thing is, is I probably would have tried to execute at least from there, maybe here, but that widens the SO a lot because you'd be aiming for here. So I do think that this works out because your SO matches your invalidation, but it's quote unquote aggressive based on, <coughs> uh, based on not necessarily, or based on this being broken, in my opinion. Okay, that, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Perfect, perfect. Cool. This is present, right? So this creates a narrative after that breaks because yes, you do have order flow disruption, which can just, because there is a reaction here, you can justify this low as an invalidation in my opinion, um, because this then creates an internal structural range, right? So we can then go from there. <laughs> but the tricky part here is, is when to move your SL. That's like a tricky part here. Like my criteria for moving stop losses is CBOS continuation. If I have a CBOS continuation, I can then move up my SL. So for example, here we have a low into a high. We don't have or we have a pullback, then we have a new high, then we have a CBOS, and then we have a brand new high. So because we have the CBOS continuation, I can move my SL here. All right, that's that's kind of how I go about moving the SL. Um, but my problem here is the target. Okay, never mind. Yeah, the target would be based on the external. Okay, cool, cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 I just will say from a conservative standpoint, if you're aiming, if you're trying to be conservative while aiming for the external highs, which is, is like a major intraday slash swing high, um, you can justify the SL being here because you're still getting maybe a one, the four, one, the five, and there's a whole lot more possibility of you meeting that target 
right? Because at the end of the day, this low has been solidified, but we haven't solidified a high yet. You know what I mean? So it's just, it, it, it makes it more reasonable to look for this as being the SL because you don't know when the high is going to be solidified, which is solidified here, you know? So at least you entered the trade. That's like the biggest thing. And you got the direction, right? You got, and so, and you got your, your target to meet. So overall, very good, but I don't think there's a problem with putting your SL here. It does widen it quite a bit. We'll say maybe let's say what, like another 70 ish pips maybe. But um, but it, it keeps you covered. And at the end of the day, you want to win the trade. You don't want to unnecessarily lose the trade. But overall, very good. Very good. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I will say his best quality is, uh, is executions. Because then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 they're, yeah. But I will say it requires a ton of focus. Like you have to be kind of glued on, on the chart during that period, which is the only downside in my opinion. All right, let's see. Okay, let's pull up this next set of charts. Hmm, I think I missed one. Oh, it's the same chart for four, for three and four here in the chat. I don't know if that's a mistake. But cool. Any more case studies outside of that? Any more questions? Cool. We'll get, we'll get into yours after I go through these. Also, if you're watching the recording, let me know how the quality is. I'm I'm so sick of OBS. I think the quality is horrible. So I kind of moved over to a new software. Hopefully this one works. And I can actually record at like 1440p and stuff like that. No, no, no. On the recording. No, no, no. The, you're on the live right now. I'm, I mean, after we're, after we're done and after I post it on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so it's just four. <laughs> mm -hmm. The internal structure. Okay. Okay, so directions bullish. Very similar to Raise's trade. Very, very similar. Yeah, very, very. I think this is the exact. Uh, I don't know if it's the exact one, but it's very similar to Raises trade we went over earlier. But directions right, solidified low. Yep, because of the break of structure. Yep. Um, and you can really justify, like I said, with Raises scenario, you can justify the final sell to buy move, right, as a POI, to then aim for here. Just solely going off of one time frame. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. A bit, a bit aggressive, yeah, because there is no OFD present. Like for example, right, this is an LGC because the internal has to be bearish in order to give you discounted pricing. So this technically is still going down to the to a previous low. Uh, this here is a cbos so once we have the cbos then we have a high low retracement but we do have an internal break so even though it's slight 
I think we can justify this here being a structural disruption after that break, meaning that we can buy here. And that's the, okay, yeah, you're right. That's the conservative entry, yep. And I mean, if you wanted to be even more conservative from there, like there's OFD right after that, right? Like you can see here, POI, reaction, taking the POI, sell to buy, this can then aim for a previous high. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. No worries. Um, but overall, very, very good. I just think this is a bit aggressive. If we're going to be this aggressive, like just use the invalidation as SO. Use the solidified point as an SO. That's usually like a, like a non-negotiable for me. It has to be some type of solidified point. Just because I know that solidified points create internal ranges. Uh, and I know that if a range breaks, then my idea is probably invalidated. That's why it's usually always... A, or my validation is usually always a solidified point. But yeah, move on to the next. Yep, good target. But you see, like I'm saying, like we could have easily just based on this time frame. Entry, target, direction, liquidity, execution here. But yeah, very nice. All right, one more. <coughs> Let's see. Direction, direction, uh, not OFD. There is no reaction from the POI, there is no reaction. It just, at least not a confirmed reaction, but also we broke through the POI. So I think we're kind of nitpicking here. I don't agree with OFD here. Um, now the issue is this is entirely a guess, All right? Why here? Why not here? Why not here? Why not here? Um, the issue, right, that is not that the trade won. Well, actually, it is an issue that this trade won because I'm sure that there is uh, that there's quite a bit of losses accumulated over time where you're just kind of guessing at a POI rather than waiting for a reaction. Because just based on this time frame alone, if we're just going off this time frame alone, right, where is the buy to sell that created the bearish range? Right, this is the bearish range. And where did uh, the final buy to sell occur? Here. Right, so I can justify this right as my entire POI. Now, if I want to trade internally and wait for a reaction is one thing, right? It just depends on the entry criteria because we can also justify, right, that we have an LGC in play because the LGC is in play. We can, at the bare minimum, right, anticipate this to be taken, which it was, right? Um, but my entire buy to sell region is here. And that's where my POI would have been. So I don't have an issue with this trade winning. I do have an issue that it's extremely aggressive, right? And that a lot of other factors have to come in play in order for this type of trade to give you that, you know, that high risk reward based on a POI. Uh, but it's a good foundation. I think this is a great place to start because you go from guessing POIs to then trying to trade reactions to then trying to pursue high risk reward to then uh, being coming conservative and you understand that you just want to win the trade. That's kind of like the evolution, right, that I've seen over the years. But great trade. I just think it's a bit aggressive. But yeah, any more questions, concerns, guys, or anything else we should cover before uh, we sign off for today? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, because it w- it took too much. F- like when I was trying to swing, it was always minor time frame refinement and higher time frame uh, targets. Meaning that, like with like I said, with the monsters entries, it's like I'm looking at a 30 second window, right, for a move that's gonna last maybe a week or two. But I also have to understand that if I'm wanting a move to uh, take a week or two to hit my TP, I have to be willing to wait a week or two, right, to then wait for that scenario to even present itself. So if I'm thinking of trying to be efficient with my pairs, right, because I did have the belief, right, that you should stick to two to three pairs, I no longer have that belief. I think that if you're swing trading, you should 100% be upping the amount of pairs that you're trading. But because I wanted to hone down, right, on one to two to maybe even three pairs, I just thought it was ideal to scalp. Why? Because I'm in and out within the couple, well, let's say like two to three hours. So I maximize my reward over, right, the time spent uh, within the charts. Whereas if I'm swinging, I would catch myself uh, looking at trading view all fucking day, you know, and it's not something I want to do. So now that I've honed down on the scalping, I don't mind going back now and trying to swing using the scalp approach, right, where I'm using buy to sell regions like I did here essentially stuff like this, rather than trying to pick a, a magical POI that's going to give me the result that I want. Um, and now I can just focus on winning the trades and just upping the win rate. That's like the main thing is upping the win rate. But yeah, I do, I do think that uh, my opinion will always change, I think, in terms of what I prefer between scalping and swinging. Um, but over, I think now I'm starting to transition into, can I find swing trades that are going to pay me, uh, slowly, but more consistently rather than me having to be glued on a chart so that I can, uh, maximize my reward per session. So it's just, it's just, which one do I want to do? Which one do I feel more comfortable with? And that's just kind of like questions I have to answer over the next couple of months. Cool, but uh, do we have any more questions, guys, concerns, case studies? I know a couple of people in here have the book. If you do have the book, what do you guys think of the book? Worked really hard on that one. <clears throat> like, I think I worked harder on the book than I've done on videos. But yeah, other than that, do we have any more questions, guys, concerns, or can we wrap it up here? Sorry? Okay, cool. Cool. Um, hopefully we can do these a little bit more often. Hoping for like every two weeks, maybe. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys bring. Make sure you guys bring um, more case studies. More stuff to review, more questions. And if you have any questions over the book, feel free to reach out. I'm new here, where can I get access to the book? Well, the book isn't free. The book, you can find all the information in the free Discord. Are you not in the free Discord? Give me one second. But either way, if you don't want to go to the, the free Discord, it's all on my website, on the RCV website. Oh, why does that look like that? Whoa, that does not look good. I do not like that. Okay. Uh, it should be on my website here. You're not on the free discord. Let me send you. Okay. Well, even if you're there, you can, 
I think you can just come here. Yep, just go to our website here. I'm going to send this link. The free Discord link is present there. We're going to join our free Discord, and then there's a lot more information in there as well. I have my whole month journal, but bad luck next month. Uh, we'll come back with more trades and some good scenarios. Perfect. Perfect. But yeah, feel free to join this. We're at about 1,100 members now. Uh, but either way, it doesn't matter to me. The less, the better, in my opinion. But uh, either way, I think we can go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. Yeah, man, it's good. Uh, good talking to you guys. I will see you guys hopefully in the next two weeks. Uh, but yeah, I'll make sure to uh, post this on the YouTube channel and I'll post the, the link and stuff in the free Discord for you guys to watch. But cool, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. <clears throat>